Hey guys, what is up? This is Stephanie, AKA the Limitless Babe, reminding you today and every day that you are limitless. So today I want to talk about why you're so tired. The real reason why you may be so tired every day. So I will start off by saying, no, I am not a doctor. No, I have not fully researched all of this. Um, and this is just my personal experience and my personal opinion. And this is not going to work for everybody. But even if it works for one person, I've done my job and I've helped someone out. So I know that for myself, many of you, if you've been following my journey for a while, you know that I am a single mother, that my daughter is two, almost three years old, and that I am full-time provider and full-time caretaker. So like, my hands are full and that I have multiple jobs. So my hands are definitely very full and I can't afford to be tired. But I will also tell you guys, this is something that I don't discuss, that there have been many times, in fact, I will say probably for the first year and a half to two years of my daughter's life, I was in a constant state of pure exhaustion. The feeling of dragging, the feeling of um, just dying for a cup of coffee or a nap, um, the feeling of, oh my gosh, this is not normal. I wonder if my thyroid is okay because I don't think I'm supposed to be this tired. Um, and maybe you can relate, maybe you can't, um, but let's see. So I will ask you guys, do you often wake up around four or five in the morning and get angry that you want more sleep. Feel like, oh man, like my alarm was going to go off in an hour or two. No, I'm going to push. I'm going to put myself back to sleep because I need eight hours. Is that you? It used to be me. <laughs> or even later, if I would get up at six, but my daughter was still sleeping, I would say, you know what? I'm going to squeeze in another. I'm going to sleep until she wakes up because I'm just so tired. I'm just going to sleep, right? Is that you? Because it was me. Um, do you wake up after doing this and then feel like, oh, why do I feel like I've been hit by a brick? Why do I feel like I'm literally having someone pull me down? Um, is that you? Because again, <laughs> that was me. So what I figured out, and uh, I have to say, I actually am grateful to a kickboxing uh gym that I joined, which I have a whole story about that though. That would be another day. But um, I had joined a kickboxing gym and on the days I didn't have my daughter, I was going to 6 a.m. class. So I had to force myself to wake up at 5, 5.30 to get up and be there on time. And what I noticed is why am I more energized on these days? And I will fully say, admit that I thought that it was the workout factor. I thought, well, I'm getting up and I'm working out. And that is definitely a proponent of it. So that's actually going to come into play in this video later too. But I will say that later on when that challenge stopped and I went back to my old habits, back to my old routine, and I've tested this. I have tested this throughout um, the last couple of months to see, well, is it really, could it really be something so simple so what I figured out is that for me, my body, my, dare I say, even maybe my human design type, I don't know if every, every projector is like this, which by the way, guys, I know I'm kind of dancing all over the place. These are all topics that I need to get to one day. But if you are in any way interested in Zodiac or anything like that, or finding fascination in why you may operate the way that you do, I would highly advise you to take it one step further and look into your human design type. In my opinion, it is a thousand percent more accurate than the Zodiac. I mean, the Zodiac already has some things where you can really say, wow, I do see those qualities in these people, but this takes it to a whole other level. This really breaks down the hows and whys of how you operate. So for me, I am a projector. There are generators, uh, manifestors, projectors, reflectors, and manifesting generators. And I believe that there are some other hybrids, but those are the main ones that we know of today. 
If you have time, I strongly recommend that you go on Google and look up, uh, how do I find my human design? And then look up your chart and really start to learn and understand because especially if you're like me, if you're a projector, life is going to make so much more sense to you. You're going to understand so much more about why you feel the way that you feel and why certain things don't work for you and certain things do work for you and how you operate. It's fascinating. What you need to operate at your peak, at your best, it is absolutely fascinating. So again, I don't know if it's anything to do with my human design or if it's just a, a Stephanie thing, but for me, I have figured out that my sweet spot is waking up around anywhere between 4.30 and 6.30 a.m. So I try on days that I don't actually have to be up at a certain time, I try to not set an alarm. I try to let my body naturally wake up. Okay. I know that for some of you, that's kind of scary, but Again, that's why I say, if I don't have anything specifically planned, I won't set an alarm. If I have a client coming early in the morning or something that I know I need to be up at a certain time, just in case, I will set that backup alarm, but I'll set it for a little bit later because I'm trying to train my body into waking up at its natural time. I'm trying to retrain my circadian rhythm to get on track and figure out its flow. And when I did that, I have to say that those are the days that I feel the best, right? So again, it I will say daylight savings time really messed with this because it would throw it off every time. But after like a week or two, I was always able to get back on track and realize, wow, like this is this is amazing. So currently, I will say I am happiest and feeling my best when I wake up between 4:30 and 5. That's my best. I know for some of you, you're like, oh my God, that sounds awful. But let me tell you. So I get up at 435. My daughter sleeps until about 830. So I've got a good three to four hours where I'm just me. There's no expectation. There's no obligation. There's that time to take care of the things that I need to do. And it's also given me the time, which this is something else that I'm going to strongly recommend if you're always feeling tired or feeling like you're off. Build yourself a morning routine. So for me, my morning routine is I wake up, I journal. I actually got myself. I love this thing. Uh, the Be Here Meow, a self-care guided journal. So I got myself a guided one because I had fallen out of this habit. So years ago, I had a really strong morning routine and self-care practice. And I could just do it all on my own. But I feel like after motherhood, you know, you kind of are recovering from everything and figuring out your new rhythm, your new life, your new everything. And so for me, a guided one is super helpful because it just helps me like hit all those little points that I need to, to think about. So I fill out my morning journal. Yes, guys, you see the red tag. This was on sale at home goods. Go check it out. Um, and then I meditate for at least five minutes you know, five to 10 minutes, depending on what I have the capacity for. But if I do at least five minutes, I feel good. I feel calm. I feel like I can go about my day slowly, peacefully, intentionally, and it feels really good. And then I also get in a quick morning workout. And again, quick because I've got about a million other things to do, right? So I'll look up maybe like a a quick seven minute workout and I'll do a little 20 minute yoga or, you know, whatever. Like I, I change it up every day, depending on how I'm feeling. I do say that I enjoy doing yoga in the morning though, just because I also like stretching my body out and calming my mind again. Like for me, my morning routine is the biggest asset in setting the tone for the rest of my day. So I want to make sure that I do things that nurture myself. So you guys also know, yes, like I always have either, you know, my morning matcha or, you know, my, my limitless coffee that I've discussed in the past. Um, but you want to make sure that you do something just for you that sets the tone for the rest of your day. Okay. So again, we're getting up when our body tells us to. Okay, which I want to talk about this in depth, but I kind of just want to recap what we've discussed so far. So you get up when your body tells you to. 
And then you go about your morning ritual and create a ritual. Really, I, I love that word because it makes it feel so um, opulent and indulgent and just like, oh, delicious, right? It makes it sound luxurious. So create a ritual for you, something that is just about you, for you, because let's be real, the rest of the day as it goes, you've got to focus on everyone and everything else, especially if you are a mother, if you are a single mother, like your focus has to be on your kids, on your work, on your pets, on your family, on everybody else. So let those first few hours, or if you don't have a whole hour, even first few minutes, be for you, only for you, and recharge your battery. That is the best time and the best opportunity to recharge your battery and feel really, really good, okay? So those are the first two points. And then the other things that I will say that help this along, if you have time, so again, for me and my human design type, I am a projector. This means that I actually do require more rest than most people, but I am also more productive. The more I rest, the more productive I am and the better of a job I can do, which sounds completely counterintuitive, which is why I say, look into your human design guys, because it will make life just click because I never understood how is it that yes, I I need a nap every day, but yet when I do that, everything gets done. And yeah, it's crazy. But again, for me, it works. For you, it might work. Maybe something else will work. I don't know. But because I need rest, I do try every day whenever possible to take a nap. And so when I don't have my daughter, that's easier because I can nap on my own schedule but when I do have her, when she naps, I nap, you know, I'll give myself maybe like an hour to do some things that I need to get done. But then I give myself at least an hour to nap and, you know, it almost always works out. Right. <laughs> so that's another thing that supports my waking up early. The other big thing that supports my waking up early, and this might not be uh, feasible for some of you, this may not be something that you want to do. But I go to bed early, you know, by, by 7.30, 8 o'clock, we're winding down in this house. By 9, 9.30, we're both asleep, you know, like we don't, is she awake? She might be because I'm talking kind of loud. <laughs> no, I'm hearing things. I thought I heard her stuffed animals talking. <laughs> but um, yeah, by like 9, 9.30 in this house, we're asleep, you know, and Again, that may be like, oh my God, you go to bed so early. Yeah, I do, but it makes the rest of my day go so well. So for me, it works. And that doesn't mean that there aren't days that I can't stay up later. What I did find is on days that I wanted or needed to stay up later, my circadian rhythm still stayed in effect where I still was getting up early. So just because I'm staying up later doesn't mean I was waking up later. And I tried to listen to my body on those days. You know what I mean? And so here's where I really want to get into um, the meat and potatoes of how this works for me. So like, especially me saying, I wake up without an alarm and I get up at this time and I just go with it. Um, I realized that for me, I have a very potent intuition. And Again, if you've followed my journey, if you follow my channel, if you've watched some of my videos, especially the DV video, you may know that I've been through things that have thrown that intuition in disarray. But there was a time when I was really heavily tapped into it and I knew that I wanted to get back into that. And so I thought, okay, what was different about that time in my life? And when I really thought about it, I was doing a morning routine that morning meditation is game changing because that's the opportunity that you allow God, universe, source, your guardian angels, your heavenly guides, whoever you want to talk to you and to tap into you. And so that's how I actually start my meditation. I always say like, dear God, guardian angels, heavenly guides, do your thing. Talk to me. And so I invite them to talk to me. Right. And I, 
create the space for my ears to be open and for me to listen to the message of the day and what I need to do. And I ask them, guide my steps, guide my journey, right? So that's a big thing. Um, but again, for me, I just felt like when I could tap into my intuition, I realized that the reason I kept waking up on my own around 435 was because God knew that was what was best for me. And so he's not going to throw a bucket of cold water over your head while you're sleeping, you know, like that's not going to happen, but there are going to be these gentle nudges. And once I started becoming aware of them, I realized, oh, this is you telling me to get up. And it's funny because again, like as I was trying to tap into my intuition, I started becoming aware of like, oh, like even like when the, like he would use the dog, he would use the sunrise. He would use different things because I'm a sucker for a good sunrise. He would use different things to nudge me to wake up, you know, like something falling in the living room, like a picture or something coming down. So like, crap, now I have to get up. But, um, I started to become very aware of those little signs that was God saying, get up, start your day. This is your time. This is you like, go, go, go. Um, it would be like an incredible burst of inspiration. Like there have actually been quite a few videos that I recorded at like 5 AM because the inspiration hit in the, like in that, like we morning hour that I was like, Oh my gosh, I have to go do this now. So Again, tapping into your intuition and tapping into your body and recognizing what works for you involves like getting really open to seeing those signs, getting really open to hearing your message from your God source, whatever, you know, whoever you believe in and, um, and noticing the little things and how you also notice the little signs is when you tap into your gratitude. So these are all little things that I was doing at this one specific time that really heightened my intuition. So I was meditating. I was actively having a heavy duty relationship with God where I would talk to him throughout my day, daily. Um, I was having gratitude. Again, in those moments, thank you, Lord, for your favor. I was actively acknowledging, I see what you did there and I'm grateful. Thank you. I'm not just grateful to some mystical unknown. No, I'm grateful to my creator. I know who did this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Actually, I forgot to mention, that's another part of my morning routine. And again, if you are not of the Christian faith, I totally understand. And everyone to each his own. I respect everybody. And I hope that you can respect me, but you can find a book that works for you. For me, I also read a passage every day from this book, Jesus Calling. Um, I do feel like it helps me kind of set like an intention before my meditation of what I'm thinking about, about what I'm processing. So that's another good thing, another good tool. So basically I rebuild my intuition by rebuilding my relationship with my creator. And when you do that, you will be shocked to see all the different doors that open up and all the different things that you're more aware of and acutely like paying attention to that you might not have been paying attention to before. Um, and that will also help, like I said, with waking up earlier and just feeling more calm first thing in the morning. Um, there was something else that I wanted to talk about. Oh, so what gets in the way of your intuition? Not taking care of yourself. Okay. So if you're eating really crappy processed foods all the time, that's going to block your intuition. Um, drinking alcohol or caffeine in excess, again, it's gonna block your intuition. I did notice that like when I was excessively tired, I was drinking excessive amounts of caffeine and stressing myself out and creating this anxiety in me. And that was completely conflicting to what I wanted to do, which was calm down and tap into my intuition. So this is another point. Oftentimes the counterintuitive response is the right one. Okay. So for example, this video is about, you know, what to do if you're always tired. It's pretty counterintuitive to say, well, just wake up earlier. Wouldn't that to most people make them think, well, 
if I'm always tired and I wake up earlier, then that means I'm having less sleep. Won't I be more tired? It's super counterintuitive, but it works, right? And the same thing for when you're feeling very anxious or stressed out, um, it's super counterintuitive to say, I'm going to slow down. I'm going to intentionally slow down and pump the brakes. Well, wait a second. I'm stressed and I'm full of anxiousness because I have a million and one things to do. And you're going to tell me to slow down. Yes, I am. Because when you slow down and you do things intentionally, believe it or not, you get more done and you get it done right. You don't have to redo things. You don't have to fix mistakes. Everything is done right. And you feel a bit more of a sense of accomplishment. And it actually inspires you to be more productive because you feel good about yourself. So again, super counterintuitive. Um, <laughs> I know I'm kind of bouncing around on topics this morning, guys. I probably should have created notes for this video, but I've been trying to get this video to you guys for a week and something has gotten in the way every single time. So I'm just running with it. Uh, there was one other thing that I wanted. Okay. So another thing that blocks your intuition, and this is a big one. So we talked about food. We talked about alcohol and caffeine, um, rushing, rushing throughout your day, right? Feeling anxious, stressed. These things block your intuition. When you are in a hurry, your intuition cannot operate because you're not listening because you're so busy thinking about everything else that you have to do. That you're not listening. Now the big, big one, and this is something that I talk about in a lot of my videos, and this is definitely what hindered my intuition for a period of time. Toxic relationships. When you allow a toxic relationship into your life, it creates havoc in your brain, havoc in your body. You feel like you are in a constant state of fight or flight, a constant state of chaos. And when you are in that space, it is really hard to tap into your intuition. So I strongly suggest that you pay really close attention to the people that you allow into your lives, um, the people that are coming in and the people that are already there and really tap into how does this person make me feel? And not just the surface level of, well, they do nice things for me. So, I mean, they, that must be good, right? I mean, they're nice people. Listen, toxic people, again, as I have said before, do not parade around wearing t-shirts that say, I'm toxic. Okay. They don't do it. They don't do it. They will oftentimes be the person that you think is the nicest person in your life. And remember, like another video that I have talked about, there is a very big difference between being nice and being kind. We don't want nice people. Okay. Nice people are dangerous. Nice people scare the hell out of me. You know who I respect? Kind people. I want kind people in my life all day, every day. Kind people that tell me the truth, but have my best interests and their best interests at the forefront. And we know where we both stand. All right. Nice is I'm doing this for you because I want something from you. It's not selfless. It's actually in increase in, incredibly selfish okay being nice is a very selfish characteristic because it is oftentimes in seek of validation or of some other means of reward okay it's very seldom done just because they want to be nice those acts are acts of kindness Okay, when someone is doing something because they genuinely just want to, because they have their cup is full and they have the capacity to do it without expecting anything from you, that is an act of kindness, not an act of niceness. There's a reason there's no phrase acts of niceness. <laughs> there just is. Um, so yes, um, really evaluate your relationships. And this can be a romantic partner. This can be a friendship partner. This can be a family dynamic. This can be a coworker. This can be a child. This can be um, a teacher or whatever. There's lots of ways to have different toxicity in your life. And it's very important that you really evaluate your relationships, weed out the ones that you can. And if there are ones that you cannot weed out, develop strong and healthy boundaries so that you can at least function in a healthy, in, in the healthiest manner possible with these people while still maintaining your peace and your intuition. Okay. Um, so I think I've given you guys all of the breakdown of what works for me. And again, 
It might work for you. It might not. I suggest, and I would love if you would give it a try. If you are feeling tired all the time, try it. What do you have to lose? Try the second that you wake up in the morning naturally, whether that's 4 a.m., 5 a.m., whatever the case is, 3.30 a.m., well, 3.30. Honestly, if I wake up before four, I try to push myself to go back to sleep. If I can, excuse me. If it doesn't happen immediately, I just get up. But um, yeah, like try to practice just getting up when your body calls you to and developing a routine that feels good for you. And let me know how that makes you feel for the rest of the day. Because again, for me, I know that on the days that I don't do this, those are the days that I'm dragging. And on the days that I do, I end up feeling energized and good and more productive. So for whatever reason, it works for me. And I have been feeling so inspired to talk about this for such a long time that I just know it's meant for someone. Someone needs this message. And I hope you enjoy your few hours in the morning of just self-indulgence. And I hope you do something great for yourself. And again, as always, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Please hit that bell for notifications and please spread the word because the more the merrier. And this is perfect timing because Janet's about to lose her mind. Bye guys. Stay limitless.